can you practice your religion, your spirituality in a way that is safe for you if the environment that you live in isn't safe to practice in? Hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and if you want to learn how to become a witch or a Wiccan, hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss anything. It's sad to have to do a video like this and in this modern day and age it's actually really quite, um, it's still a concern really that I have to make a video like this but the truth is that even though in pretty much most Western countries that I'm aware of we have freedom of religion and we have every right to practice uh, Wicca because it is uh, noted as a spiritual tradition and a religion that we still have to be concerned about practicing it in secret. I don't think any other religion has this problem yet we do and it's real and I know a lot of people uh, want to practice Wicca as a spiritual practice yet if you came out where perhaps you live, maybe the, the, the town you live in, maybe the people you live with are going to be really um, either really against it uh, or tease you for it or something like that. So generally this problem occurs when people live in a town um, or a city that is dominated by a particular religion in quite a fundamentalist sense um, or if you're living with people who are of particular uh, religious orientation and there are a couple of religions out there that um, are opposed to uh, paganism, polytheism and um, and, and witchcraft and those people can be so determined and so believe that you're wrong practicing it that they can make, make life either dangerous for you or very difficult for you if you came out about your practice. There are also situations where you might be living with atheists and, and even though most atheists will just go oh, yeah that's a load of rubbish and mind their own business there are fundamentalist atheists out there who can be really nasty uh, towards people who have spiritual beliefs as well and be very dead set on trying to convert people to atheism so it can be just as dogmatic as um, spiritual people can be with their dogma. So these are situations that you may find yourself in it's either dangerous to come out about what you're doing uh, or you're just going to get a whole lot of crap if you do and sometimes it's just not worth uh, standing in your your beliefs uh, at this particular point in time so how do you practice your religion which you have every right to practice without arousing any kind of um, unpleasant uh, reaction from the people around you well this is where you have to get really really good at your imagination and using your senses, your visualization skills, your auditory skills, your sense of touch, your sense of uh, smell, to be able to really imagine that you're in a situation where you can feel tactilely that you're in this situation, you can hear the sounds around you, you can see things around you in your imagination because this is pretty much what you have to do when you've got to do it in secret. So if you can't do a ritual without somebody seeing you or finding out, you need to do it in your head, in your imagination. So essentially you could be just sitting on your bed uh, as if meditating, or if even that's not allowed, uh, you could be just lying down, pretending you're asleep and do a ritual. You can do all this work on the astral to some extent. So generally when we start doing things in the craft or any kind of magical tradition, we will do it physically. So we'll physically set up a circle uh, and then further on down the track, we start to learn how to do that on an astral level so that we're still invoking the elements, we're still calling in uh, the, the deities. We're doing all that stuff, but we're doing it in our imagination or in our head. And that's something that is a skill in and of itself. But if you are in a situation where you really want to practice your, your spirituality, um, but you can't, then you're going to have to get really good at doing it because it really is your option. And it gives you a lot more freedom because it means that you can still practice, but you're doing it all on the astral instead of totally on the physical level. The things that you can do in your imagination is that you can actually do a spell 
in your imagination. So you can just imagine that you have the materials there, that you're lighting the candle, that you're doing the magic, that you're saying the incantation in your head. It may not be as powerful at first than it would be if you're doing it physically. It may be a lot harder to stop monkey mind from wanting to jump around um, and imagine and think about other things while you're trying to concentrate on what it is that you're doing. But if you can practice meditation and you can practice being in your imagination in a very focused way, you can still practice your craft in a way that nobody is going to know what it is that you're doing. Some things, of course, have to be done physically. Some things are more fun, of course, to do physically, especially ritual. But when you're in that situation where you can't do it, you just have to use uh, what you can. So essentially, you don't need any candles. You don't need anything physical. All you need is yourself and your imagination. And you can do the practices imagining that you'll physically do it. Feeling like you're moving around in the space. See the pentagrams being drawn. Feel the air as you move your body even though you're imagining it. So it's using all your senses, which you need to do to be a good witch or a Wiccan anyway, when it comes to practicing magic. So you, if you're in that situation where you can't actually physically do something, but you've got to learn to do it all mentally, you're going to get really, really good, really good at mental magic. You're going to get really good at being able to focus your, your intention, to gather the energies together in your, the mental realm and use that for your magic, which is a really, really good skill to develop and a skill that not many people spend the time on developing. So this is all about being covert with your spirituality. It's unfortunate that some people are forced to be covert with their spirituality when they're supposed to have freedom uh, to express their spirituality, but we have to do whatever we can to be able to express who we truly are in the world. Nobody has the right to tell you what to believe or not believe. Nobody has the right to tell you how to express your spirituality if you're not harming anything or anybody doing it. But there are people out there who uh, are very afraid of beliefs. They're afraid of spiritual beliefs in general, or they're just afraid of particular types of spiritual beliefs. People are afraid of magic. People are afraid of witchcraft. People are afraid of pagans uh, because it threatens them in some way. It threatens their security in their own beliefs in some way. If a person isn't threatened by your beliefs, then they won't get upset when you tell them what your beliefs are. But if they feel threatened by them in some way, so either that's threatening their own beliefs, it's challenging their beliefs, then they will get upset. So practice uh, where you can, get really good at doing it in your imagination, and um, eventually, hopefully, at some point in your life, you will be able to have put yourself in an environment where you can practice um, outwardly and not feel that you're going to be uh, discriminated against, harassed, um, beaten up, killed, or anything for doing so. Okay, so that is the theme of this video. If you are wanting to start your practice and you don't know how to navigate your way through the terrain, I have a free video that is 20 minutes and it just tells you where to start with your Wiccan practice and how to navigate your way through the practices. That link will be in the description field below this video. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you on the next video. Blessed be.